You're listening to the Youth Creek Podcast on KHZ Network. I love singing and dancing. Find us on Facebook at Decibel UNG Radio and find us on Twitter at Decibel UNG. If you like this episode, please leave a like and comment on our iTunes page at KHZ Network. And now for the podcast. For 50 cents, I'll suck your dick. (laughs) Well, it's a great price. It almost makes me wish I had a dick for you to suck. I'll take that as a yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Youth Critic Podcast. I am your host, Kel Smith. Joining me today is Dan DeHerty. How's it going, dude? It's going good. And Dan, what are we talking about today? The, the Citizen Kane of ejaculatory puppet films. <laughs> it's only the Citizen Kane because I can only think of one other movie that's done it. Which is... Uh, well, which is the Happy Time Murders. Happy Time Murders is the only movie because um, it's the only movie that's ever had a puppet ejaculate in my recollection. But then again, I've only been alive for almost 25 years, so I don't know. Yeah, no, no, you're probably right. Um, I've, I saw, what's it called, uh, Meet the Feebles a long time ago, and I don't remember any ejaculate in that film, but it's another depraved puppet movie. And also, one of my favorite comedies is Team America World Police, but instead of ejaculation, there's um, shitting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, which, you know, if you have not seen Team America World Police, please go check it out. It's actually a really funny comedy. Um, uh, but, Dan, so before... so. Before we get into Happy Time Murders, uh, what is your relationship with Muppets and basically the puppet film genre? Um, I loved the Muppets growing up so much, and I also I like ev- like like everyone else. I grew up on Sesame Street, and I had like for maybe a year when I was in elementary school, my favorite thing was anything Muppet related. So I, I remember being like a really young and hearing about this movie coming out. And when I first heard that they were making a puppet movie for adults, I was disturbed and a little upset that I wouldn't be able to watch it. But then it got pushed in development hell, and now I finally got to watch it. Yeah, now that we're both adults. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so for me, I yes, I watched Sesame Street on PBS as a kid and um and i liked the muppets but i was i my childhood was weird because i really only liked a very few things like harry potter and spider-man and that was it Mm -hmm. um but yes but i still love the the muppets uh especially i remember renting the muppet movie from my local library and being really fascinated by it so uh so yeah i i have a fat so i have this is actually, I hadn't heard of this movie until like three months ago when the Deadpool, when it was in front of Deadpool 2. Mm-hmm. And so for, so obviously when I saw the uh, Red Band trailer in front of Deadpool 2, that was the funniest thing about that whole, about my whole experience with Deadpool 2. <laughs> uh, honestly, like that, that movie, and also it got the biggest reaction out of everybody because everyone was just like, I cannot believe they're making this movie. Yeah, everyone was either laughing or fully disgusted at what was going on. <laughs> yes, and so where is Deadpool two? They just mumbled and maybe laughed occasionally, and that's no dis. It's nothing against Deadpool two. It's just it sounds like a little bit of something against Deadpool two. It, it's a little bit, but it's very much like you know when the Muppets cursing is better than you know your sequel to a movie that people found funny two two three years ago. You're you're kind of out of the game. Um, so, but yeah, so Happy Time Murders, uh, originally this episode was supposed to be like the end of the year roundup, but then I actually found, but then I was like, you know what, I'll see the Happy Time Murders, uh, because A, I need to get the stink that was mile 22 out of my mouth. I mean, wow, holy shit, that was a, what the, what was that? I can I can only imagine because I will never pay to watch a, a Mark Wahlberg Peter Berg collaboration. It, no, d- yeah, it's so. 
I mean, this is the that was the worst of their of the the quartet now. Uh, so yeah, wow, what a what a what a shit show. Um, that that may be, you know, we might do an episode one day on it, just you know, just so I can scream for an hour and a half. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, Happy Time Murder, so I watched it, and I knew a little bit about the bad reviews, but I kind of went in cold, and Dan, I have to say, I kind of liked it. Well, I'm glad to hear that you did. Um, I actually, here's the funny thing, is that from, like I mentioned that I had been, that I heard about this movie like way when it was first announced, and the concept art, and I was way into it, and then I totally forgot about it uh once it was like canceled three times over i think mm -hmm. but then i re i remember i saw um a couple months ago like a week before the trailer came out someone say that the trailer was coming out next week so i got super excited and then the trailer let me down big time and i don't know if anyone who follows me on twitter knows that for or from when that trailer dropped up to before i saw the movie i was vehemently against this movie's very existence. I was basically going to see it to hate watch it. And because I'm predictable, I actually ended up getting a few laughs out of this. It's not as clever or interesting as the concept really could have made it, but it's a, it's a serviceable late summer comedy, I'd say. Yeah, so let me ask you this. Why were you vehemently against it? Because I saw some of the tweets, but I, I wonder why. Okay, well, first was out of the fact that they used the uh, the first song used in the Red Band trailer is the theme song to Undisputed with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. So for whatever reason, it rubbed me the wrong way that I would have to associate the puppet sex movie with one of my favorite talk shows. But that's to that's just a weird me thing. But the other thing was just that I'd been hyping it up in my head so much as this clever noir puppet movie and then it comes out and it looks like just another raunchy lowbrow buddy comedy and uh for anyone who follows me also knows that i hate sausage party and sausage oh, really party, sausage party walked so that the happy time murders could run because without the success of both deadpool and sausage party in 2016 we don't get a happy time murders movie greenlit so basically through these two very biased points, I was just against the Happy Time Murders' very existence, but out of morbid curiosity, I went and saw it. And it's not that bad. It's actually kind of fun. Yeah, it's... Uh, admittedly, like like you said, it's not clever, like, at all. I mean, no. or, or it's not clever at the slightest, because, I mean, I, this is, like, one of the most procedural scripts you could for a noir movie. I mean, this is not even, sometimes it's not even a parody. It's just a straight up like remake of a, you know, or re like collection of a bunch of other noir, uh, movie. noir yeah. movies. Yeah. So it, so it's not even like clever in the sense that Lord Miller were clever when they made 21 Jump Street. So it's not even that kind of clever, but there's enough, but for me, there's enough jokes and I don't hate the characters, so uh, you already have a leg up on against Mile, Mile Twenty Two movie. <laughs> uh, this show, this whole show is going to be just me bashing on Mile Twenty Two, just because <laughs> fuck that movie. Um, but um, but yeah, so uh, so yeah, I was into it and I was really enjoying it, and then it, there were some few surprises like. Um, what they did with Elizabeth Banks. And also, I just found it really funny that Melissa McCarthy was addicted to sugar. I know that's a terrible thing to laugh at, but just <laughs> her addiction to sugar in this movie really made me laugh. And then there are some really good moments about... And also, I found this world more intriguing than the world of Bright. So Yeah, actually... Here's this is a comparison I made uh, walking out of the movies that I went in expecting this to be uh, sort of a sausage party type movie like the trailers were advertising. It actually is. And bear with me on this. This is the movie you would get if Paul Feig directed Bright. Yes, absolutely. I mean, Paul Feig would probably 
do a little bit more to subvert the genre a little bit. But you're right. Paul Feig, if, because it, you know, not only does it have the Melissa McCarthy uh, connection, but it also has, uh, but also it just, it's, you know, its color palette is very similar to Paul Feig movies. And its style is very similar. And also, at the and also, there's a genuine heart to Happy Time Murders, in the midst of you know the vulgarity of it. So, yeah. So, it. So yeah, you're you're right. It's a Paul Feig movie. Even though I was expecting you to say this is bright, but if like it was a smarter movie, that's what I was expecting you to say. It's this is much better than bright. I would much more want to watch a sequel to this than a sequel to Bright, but actually, if Happy Time Murders was a Netflix original, it would be like the third best movie Netflix has ever produced. <laughs> oh, hey, be careful now. Apparently, <laughs> apparently Netflix is doing really good in the romantic comedy genre lately. So I hear. Um, but yeah. But yeah, it would have been because, yeah... They, and and you're including uh, the Glor- Cloverfield Paradox and Mute, right? I try not to remember that those movies exist, but... But yeah, you include it in that roundup? Yes. All right. So... Anyhow, Happy Time Murders. Yeah, Happy Time Murders. Um, so, Dan, what did you like about the movie? Obviously, it's funny, but what'd you like? Uh, I... Well, this is like... It's a basic of a movie where puppets are involved but the puppetry in this movie that's on display from henson alternative is really really strong and i liked all the puppet designs especially uh of uh phil phillips the lead puppet detective and uh the voice work from bill beretta as that character really worked even though he sounds like he's doing a uh robert de niro in heat impression Mm -hmm. um yeah basically i here's a here's the thing is that people have been uh, basically saying that this movie is like a lazy satire, but I don't really see what it's trying to satirize. I think it's more just showing you a world where puppets operate on the same plane of existence that humans do. And I think it's it's basically just a sight gag, but it is so funny to me that uh, sugar and maple syrup are hard drugs and hard liquor for puppets. Like that amuses me to no end. Yeah, and it's even more amusing when Melissa McCarthy, who has a puppet liver, it's, you can, you can, the, the, I'm sure there's a science to it. Yeah. Um, but um, there's no reason to question a puppet liver when this movie very much establishes that puppets and humans can have relations, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, um, but yeah. So for me, you know, you're you're right. It's not really trying to satirize. Like I wouldn't know what it would be satirizing as much as it's really just trying. It really is just very much. Brian Henson wanted to make a movie where puppets, you know, have where puppets blow each other up, mm-hmm. have sex, to basically breaking the mold that his father had. His father and many other creators with puppets have done you know for many years and even in his later stage i mean uh jim henson worked on movies that were darker than darker than regular children's fair like the witches and Mm -hmm. uh labyrinths i think i think also yeah so i mean he he was so so i mean that mold was already starting to break but brian henson's kind of continuing it on forward by just straight up being like, no, we're making a hard R. Puppets are fucking. You see, uh, pubic the pubic hair of uh, of of puppets, and in full view, and yeah, yeah, and and and, and yeah. So, in, in a go, I have a quick point to make about late stage uh, Jim Henson that actually ties into noir films. If anyone out here listening to this hasn't seen the 1980s Henson production Dog City. It's a noir film that's about 50 minutes long. It was made for TV, and it's a noir film with dogs. It was on Filmstruck a while ago. I don't know if it's still there, but check out Dog City because Dog City 
is a really, really funny. Uh, that's much more of a send up of the noir genre than Happy Time Murders is. Yes. Yeah, I. It's very much. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I'm willing to bet it is. Because, well, is dog is Dog City? That's the name of it, right? Dog City, yes. Is it on Criterion or is it on? Um, or was it just exclusively for Filmstruck? Uh, I, I'd have to check. I can't remember exactly. Okay, well, but yes. So, yeah, and really, I mean, as much as I do like the film, and I really do admire the puppet work, which it is astounding. I mean, it's, it's, it's Brian Henson continuing, you know, the legacy of his dad. So, of course, there's some really good puppet work that's a good mixture of. You know CGI, but they're also like you know under the table or under or but like right under the camera frame moving Phil or other puppets around. So mm. I mean it's definitely that, but it's really well good because it's animate. It's you know the puppets are animated in a way that it expresses emotions and whatnot. So it it works on that level. So it works technically as a movie. And it and as far as comedies go, it's not even like that badly made of a comedy i've seen comedies that were lazy that were more lazily or more shy in a procedural way so i kind of admire some of the craft of it and the jokes but yeah if my only stickler for the film is basically you know i wish there was more to the script and what i mean by more to the script i don't mean like a more deeper thoughtful analytical you know, ideology of this world. I don't need deeper meanings. I, I was kind of looking more towards, you know, and I hate to keep using this comparison, but 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street send up the high school film genre while also, you know, while also sending up, you know, cop genre. It, it, it does a lot of send up and it does it very well to the point where it almost to where it is a satirization of Michael Bay films and uh and high school and John Hughes movies in the same film. Yeah. So, if you're going to you know, use this concept of muppets being or basically muppets, you know, cursing and, you know, being adult, you know, have some more to it, you know, while it's going on, like have more send up, have more especially in the noir genre, because the noir genre itself is basically now a parody of itself. Yeah. So have more fun with it. Don't just, you know, don't just use it to hang up dirty jokes. And I think Happy Time Murders just peters outside of the line of just like, we just need a plot line just to hang dirty jokes and have, you know, scenes where Melissa McCarthy improvises with a puppet. Yeah. So it just rises above that line just a bit, but the jokes are just funny enough to where I give it a pass. There's there. See, it's the jokes for the most part are good for like a chuckle. There's no gut busting moment like you would think a movie like this should have. Well, and the problem is the best jokes are in the trailer. Yeah, I mean, and and, and the reason why they're the best, the, they're great jokes, is because of the shock value of it. Because you're shocked that you're seeing a puppet ejaculate the best joke in the trailer isn't even in the final film uh there's, there's the... a there's a line in the first trailer where joel McHale says i'll have your badge for this i'm in the fucking fbi and then the uh phil phillips puppet responds oh what's that stand for a fucking big idiot and that that line is nowhere to be found i think it is in the movie no it's in because this movie has like 15 minutes of outtakes in the credits. Oh, okay. I thought I did hear it at some point in the movie at the end. But, yeah. So, with that said, do you want to get into spoilers? Uh, just right off the bat, I could telegraph who the uh, killer was going to be the second she was introduced. Um, okay. there's, there's no... Uh, there's no remote tension about thinking about who it could be because you pretty much know immediately who it'll be, even though I'll give them this. There's a little bit more to 
why the uh, character is orchestrating all these murders that you wouldn't catch right off the bat. But from the second she's introduced, you can tell that she's going to be the one who is the one who's killing all the cast of the Happy Time Gang. Okay. So I do have a question. Well, you kind of just answered the question, but... So, but yeah, for me, I try and allow the movie to kind of move along, even though I knew very much instantly that character you're talking about, like the moment she's introduced, I knew that she would be very much a part of this because this is how, because that's how noirs work. Mm -hmm. Um, And this movie clearly is a noir movie that doesn't want to send up too much. Yeah. So, so I figured it out pretty instantly. However, I was, however, I kind of just wanted to see, you know, how it evolved and see how she was involved. Maybe it's kind of like, you know, maybe it's kind of like in uh, Alfred Hitchcock way, like North and Northwest, where she's just with them, with the bad people. But who knows? Yeah. But, But you never know. So, so yeah, with that, I mean, again, like I said, this is a noir movie that has like little to no send up. So, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, but with that, we're. I can't. I need. We we need to kind of go into spoilers. So. Um. So. So, wait. What's the kill? What's her name again? The character's name we're talking about. Sandra, I want to say. S- oh, Sandra White. Yes. Uh, so yes, Sandra Y is responsible for everything and how she's into the movie is kind of fucked up, but it works on a, but it works on a over the top way that is so crazy that, you know, it kind of fits with the movie, it kind yeah. of fits with how insane with this movie is. So yeah, so I thought... So, I mean, I was like, so, yeah, I knew she was involved, and I knew that a lot was going to happen, but it's kind of funny that she basically essentially knew where everyone was going to be at the time they were going to be there. Yeah. For all the, so she can orchestrate all the murders. Like, that's that's the most, that's the craziest thing about this movie, and that's the part where it's a little bit unbelievable, but then again, this is a movie where puppets curse. So, what do you do? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, what did? So, I mean, what did you think of the twist? If you want to, if you mind elaborating more. Uh, well, basically, I'll run it by like this. So, the main puppet, Phil Phillips, was discharged from the force because he, quote unquote, wouldn't shoot a puppet. But when you see him. When he misses the person who the puppet who he was shooting at, he hits an innocent bystander straight through the head while that guy is with his daughter. So you, so by the end when you find out that the daughter is Sandra and that's why she's trying to uh, get uh, Phil Phillips' name dragged even more through the mud, that's a little bit uh, more clever than I think it would get credit for. Like that would get a lot more credit if the movie surrounding it wasn't so thinly written. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Because I get it because the the whole situation is it's trying so hard to stick with the genre that it you know it doesn't come off as clever when, you know, the twist happens. And also when the twist happens, you know, or when we see the basically the recreation uh or the flashback of uh phil shooting not missing the guy it's like well no he shot the it kind of like well, why does everybody say he's not like shooting he didn't shoot the puppet he actually he actually shot a puppet yeah he just missed yeah and he and his whole life got fucked up for it what the fuck yeah <laughs> so uh, so i mean like really the real twist of the story should have been uh the real twist it should have been Phil is just trying to, you know, create a whole mystery just to f- fuck with the whole police. Yeah. That should have been the real twist. 
should have been a whole Kaiser Soze moment. Yeah, actually. Um. So, but yeah, but anyway, but yeah, it is clever. But the problem is, you're you're kind of just like, oh well. I mean, the most shocking thing is he fucked someone that he saw when they she was nine. But I mean, whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, they don't really establish the rules of how puppets age, anyways. So. Oh yeah, like yeah. So how? <laughs> yeah, because that's even uh, like more weird. Like so, and never mind. Anyway, um. Uh, so yeah and it's even more crazy because that's how the whole because you're wondering like why does melissa mccarthy hate him so much because he saved her life mm-hmm. you're just like so that's kind of the problem with the whole reveal is that it kind of contradicts the whole opening yeah so that's that's kind of the but i mean it's still not a bad twist like you said but that that nugget of the script deserves the rest of the movie to be on that level of cleverness. Yeah. Yes. So that's kind of so yeah, I mean that's kind of my thing is is that it feels like the writer only wrote one draft and maybe that's part of the reason why it got stuck in development so long. Maybe. Cuz yeah, like this wasn't that Again, this wasn't that thought of a thought up, thought up. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This wasn't that well thought out. No. So, that's really the biggest problem with the movie is that, you know, I mean, but still, somehow, some way, it's more thought out than bright. So not hard to do. Yeah, it's not a hard bar, not a high bar to beat, but. Still, um, I can't remember the writer's name, but yeah, you should have maybe done another draft or two to. Uh, flesh this, flesh out your ideas more, and think more, you know, intensely about what was, you know, what the characters are going through from scene to scene. Because really, you know, you kind of covered it with Melissa McCarthy's character getting addicted to sugar and maple syrup, but it's kind of a lazy excuse. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So, yeah, Sandra White is the bad person. And to make even things even more weirder, Elizabeth Banks' character, who died <laughs> earlier in the film, comes back for no reason. Elizabeth Banks gets so little to do in this movie, it's honestly very frustrating. It is, because she is uh, really... Because in the few minutes she has in this movie, she's actually pretty good. Yeah. Like, you believe her and uh, Phil were actually in a relationship. And that scene between them, you know, when they're talking in the strip club, is actually, like, it's really good dialogue. And it actually builds, a, you know, it builds the relationship without having to flashback to see it. Yeah. So, it's very well done. Um, but then she dies, which was actually the most shocking part of the movie, even though I should have seen it coming. Because it, 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 I guess it was more shocking because of just how violent it was. And then you turn to hit, turn around and you just see her corpse just burning. Yeah. But then you see her 30 minutes later and she's perfectly fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, explain movie. <laughs> that's, that's another thing that was a little disappointing. The actual murders of the Happy Time Gang aren't very clever or funny like they should be. And most of them happen off screen. Yeah, this isn't no um, hot fuzz here. No. Where people are dying by what maybe could be accidents, but it's a little... <laughs> but, you know, but it's a little too convenient, too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, You just see a bunch of heads just exploding in fur or cotton. Yeah. Um, that first uh, shootout in the porn shop is pretty uh, funny. Well, it's funny because you spent five minutes just observing the place as a whole, and yeah. and on top of that, you're berate, you're berated with an octopus uh, performing fellatio or like on a cow. Yeah, unfortunately. 
Although, although that scene probably has my favorite line in the movie, which isn't saying much, but it's the exchange between the porn shop owner and Phil. When Phil says, I guess this mystery is brought to you by the letter P. And the porn shop owner goes, if you like P, I have a whole section of it. And he cuts them off and goes, no, Vinny, I don't like P. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, yeah. And then, you know, to make, you know, and then to make it even more funny, we go behind the cinema where there's BDSM with a puppet. <laughs> that scene is so good. That's yeah, that's the funniest part. That it's that it's a fireman being dominated by a Dalmatian puppet. That's the <laughs> that, that's the funniest part of this movie by a lamp. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It, it, yeah, and and on top of that, you you're in the middle of a scene where a there's a murder going on and then there's Phil just like trying to ignore it just so he can find, you know, the records. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, it's just double layers of, you know, of stuff going on. So, <sighs> but, but yeah, it's, but yeah, that was for me, like the funniest part, but, or that whole porn shop scene was just absolutely hilarious. But then, the movie kind of just got, you know, less. It, it it never could top that. Yeah. Uh, even the ejaculation scene, kind of, you know, goes down a bit because you already saw it in the Red Band trailer. Yes. Um. So, you know, it doesn't really get funny for like extremely laugh out loud funny until Maya Rudolph and um, Melissa McCarthy have a bridesmaid reunion and they go on a subplot. I love Maya Rudolph in this. She's far and away the best human character in this. Well, she creates her own character out of, you know, a nothing character. Or yeah. what would be a nothing character in these movies. Yeah. So, you know, so she worked. And she probably did a lot more to, like, she probably, like, got written in because she was so much, because she was better. Like, mm -hmm. she was better than they were expecting. So that's why she was a much bigger part in the movie than norm normally it would be. So, but yeah, it's, but yeah, I love Maya Rudolph's bu bubbles. She just adds another layer to the character of Phil and she's just funny. Maya Rudolph is just absolutely funny. Yes. And the whole scene of, and then that whole subplot that I'm mentioning uh, with Melissa and, uh, with, or really Edwards and Bubbles, it's it's really well done. And it's absolutely funny from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just... But yeah. And then the ending is kind of whatever. And you get to see one more puppet's head blow up, and that's it. I just want to say that the most disappointing thing about this movie, and this is another thing about the Red Band trailer showing off all the best jokes, is that... Of the actual Happy Time Gang cast, Goofer could have been a scene stealer, but they don't give him enough time before he gets killed off. He has that one scene where Melissa McCarthy visits him in the crack house, and that's and it's pretty funny, but you see most of the lines in the advertisements. And then he's they, they say Goofer's washed up and he's dead, so you don't get enough. Because I think that character, like based on concept, having a... like Because there's always... In, this is going to sound bad, but like in real life, you always hear about like former stars and they go down the paths of addiction. But when it's a puppet getting addicted to maple syrup, it's that like that's ripe for so much humor, but they don't do enough with it. Well, it's ripe for humor and maybe to add more insult to injury, but it's ripe for, you know, a tragic, a small little tragic arc. Yeah. Because, and also there could be something to say about you know, about, like, you know, what it means when a show gets either canceled or it does, you know, end amicably. Like, it ends, you know, on a high note, but the the actors or the people above it or, you know, in it, or they just never can recover. They can never, like, recover from being in that role, so they just go in a downward spiral. I mean, that's essentially what happened to Phil's brother Larry, is that he... Larry Shenanigans, best name ever. That is a good name. I will give you... I will give the movie that. But yeah, it's 
you know, you could have more to say about what's happening in the movie or what's happening, you know, with the, with these actors all, because I mean, there, there's like two or three, you know, people in here that just, you know, two or three of the actors just kind of went to shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> while Larry kind of ended up with the best of the deal because he, you know, still has a nice house and he seemed like he had a nice girlfriend and, um, but, and yeah, he just got brutally, and then he gets brutally murdered by dogs. Yeah, that wasn't as funny as it probably sounded on paper. Well, it's not funny because you developed, you kind of developed all these, you know, you developed the relationship between Larry and Phil and what it means to Phil. Um, so for people that didn't find it funny, they probably had an investment, you know, with that character. Yeah. So to see that character die, basically, <coughs> in a gruesome way, in a really violent way, uh, to the, that it's it just kind of comes off as insensitive. Yeah. So. So yeah, I think. So yeah, I think it's. So yeah, I think yeah, it wasn't that funny. I mean the. The joke afterwards of the cop coming in with the little bulldog. And like, I found the murder <laughs> I found weapon. The murder weapon. Like, that is, you know, you get a little chuckle, but still, it's like that scene before wasn't really that funny. Because yeah. it's kind of, because if you really think about what's happening in that scene, it's really, like, extremely gruesome. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it makes you feel bad for laughing at the joke earlier where the the where the puppets are scared to death at a bus stop when when they're being you know growled out by chihuahuas yes it kind of makes you feel bad for laughing at that earlier yeah so you know it kind of it's a double negative um yeah so no so of course so then we're on sunday and the movie's kind of bombing because it made only like 10 million dollars this weekend on a, on a $40 million budget. But if this movie somehow had legs and did okay, would you want to see a sequel to this? Um, you know, probably not, because I feel like the novelty of the gag kind of wears it off after the initial viewing. Because, like, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't see myself revisiting this movie. I don't see it having any staying power on a repeat viewing. I think it's amusing in the moment, in the hour and a half that you're watching it and then it's like I'm not going to think about this movie again after this episode is done recording um, so yeah I it, it's unlikely enough with the box office returns but even then I do not want uh, to see a sequel very much yeah I mean even three weeks later when we get the Predator finally I probably will not be remembering this movie yeah and you're, I think you're kind of right. It's this movie's kind of a novelty slash niche film. Like it's only you know for people who really wanted this to kind of happen. Yeah. Um. So. So. So yeah, I think doing a sequel would be kind of like. You know, I don't think it would work, but maybe like in a few years down the line, maybe get like Phil Lord and Chris Miller or Paul Feig, or whoever the next you know, comedic talent director, get him to get him or her to write, you know, and direct a, you know, a movie and with puppets and then just have at it. What's the, what's who directed, um, blockers. What movie blockers with John Cena and Leslie Mann. Oh, blockers. Um, K cannon, K, K, K cannon. Yeah. K cannon directed blockers. If a sequel to happy time murders gets, announced uh maybe if brian henson wants to come back to direct it then maybe he could co-direct it with k cannon but k cannon would make a great uh happy time murder sequel or at That's least get announced yeah or at least write it i mean because remember yeah. she she wrote the pitch perfect movies yeah so and that's really the thing that that's really the weakest part of happy time murders is it just needs a better script yeah like, if you would have had Paul Feig maybe to do a rewrite or just anyone to kind of just polish it a little bit to make the jokes more funny or make the scenario 
less, you know, we just want a we just want a plot line to hang dirty jokes on. Uh, I think if you would have made it a little bit more elevated than that, I think you would have had a much more solid movie and less people just being like, "What the fuck? This is like this. This is like a di- disgrace, and you're um, you're ruining my childhood." Whatever. Yeah, didn't Henson Alternative get sued by Sesame Street a couple months ago over this? Um, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I read somewhere that that happened. It probably did. I just don't remember it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you, you, happy, happy time murders. You were, you know, you were amusing, but I think much like Deadpool, the character kind of doing this all full circle, um, you're kind of a novelty niche like Deadpool where, you know, after a while we want to see you kind of be more of a supporting character instead of the main character. So yeah. maybe get entwined with the cinematic universe. Oh boy! Don't Too give much? them any ideas. What? Don't give them any ideas. But actually, I do want to see Henson Alternative make more movies uh, with like, like make make puppet action movies, make Bad Boys Two, but with puppets. <laughs> oh yes, uh, yeah. You know what? Yes, yes, and yes, yes. And have just and just go bonkers like have, yeah. like make a movie where there's a plot where puppets get kidnapped and killed so they can be stuffed with cocaine. Yeah, and then Ooh. have an entire scene where um, uh, where Seth Rogen and a puppet are like are in a car chase and they're trying to avoid puppets. Yeah, and that puppet be voiced by. Um, I don't know what would be a good puppet. What would be a good person to voice a puppet? Hannibal Burris. Okay, yes. Just have a scene where Seth Rogen and Hannibal Burris as a puppet <laughs> are be are in a in a are in a high speed chase and they're you know having to avoid like dead corpses of puppets with, filled with cocaine. Yes. See, we can come up with better. See, we can come up with a good idea. Brian Henson, if you're listening, we will write this movie for you. Please, we would love to do it. And please, you know, and please actually make it because we do want because that would be really cool. Even if it takes 20 years, we'll we'll be happy that you made it. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so do we have any more things to say on the Happy Time Murders? Um, Joel McHale and Leslie David Baker have nothing to do in this movie and it makes me sad. Yeah, I mean Joel McHale's basically playing Joel, he's basically playing the same character he all, he played in Ted and like almost everything he does. Yeah. Which is the quote unquote douchebag. I my friend once called uh Joel McHale the dollar store Will Arnett and I think that's a very apt description. That's actually pretty accurate. He that's a, yeah, that's a very accurate. Um or maybe even like a dollar store Bradley Cooper, like when he was doing Wedding Crashers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they don't get enough to do, but and neither does Elizabeth Banks, which that took me by surprise. But then again, I mean, this is a again, this is a movie where puppets, you know, curse. They shoot each other in the head and they fuck. That's so, true. I mean, we're saying that the human characters are wasted, but you're, the, the humans aren't the selling point of the movie anyways, so. Yes. Not that it should, you know, not that it should not matter. Not that that's an excuse, but. Yeah, but still, you're watching a movie, and I think that's kind of the problem with a lot of critics is they, or I think that's maybe kind of part of the criticism. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't read a lot of all the reviews yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with that, uh, Dan, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Soderbergian and on Letterboxd at D. Doherty Films. Cool. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Movie Kale. You can also follow the show at the, Mo- at the Youth Critic. And then you can also follow the channel that distributes this podcast at KHD Network. Check us out on iTunes. Give us a... You know, subscribe if you like the show and comment below and tell us if 
we really tell us if you know i really suck at my job and i should get better guests or tell us where i'm doing really well and guests like dan to hurt dan is like a, you know a standout yeah, we're, we're sorry that we're not the waffle press yes we can never reach the height that is matt garingo and D diego crespo yes but we're gonna try our best when we do but well, i'm gonna try my best uh when we do or when me and a couple other people do the Predator podcast, our own Predator retrospective. Oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for listening to the show. Um, next week, I don't know what we'll do. We might go ahead and do the summer recap, but then again, Searching's coming out next weekend, and people seem to love that movie. What? Yeah, I forgot that was coming out. Um wide release next weekend yes and sean levy produced a movie called ken that looks kind of interesting that looks kind of entertaining so we might do the summer recap next week we might talk about ken or searching who knows stick around next week to find out two of the most decorated offices in this department what do you say Looks like a robbery gone wrong to me. This wasn't a robbery, this was a hit. What the? Someone out there <gasps> is killing puppets. Hey, handsome. You looking for some rotten cotton? I'm a woman. That's okay. Yeah, that's even better. Got a good time for you. <laughs> We're gonna catch the bastards who did these murders. Because bodies are gonna start piling up. You're one of the best damn cops I've ever seen. I'll have your badge for this. I'm in the fucking FBI. Oh, yeah? What's that stand for? Fucking big idiot? <laughs> cop, good cop, where is your dignity? Where's your empathy? Where is your sympathy? Bad cop, cop. If shit gets crazy, I'm gonna go crazy as shit. It's not just a fantasy! Yo! God, are you all right? I ruptured my hymen. This pure ecstasy. I'm not doing this. Do it. <laughs> oh, sorry about your dead human friend, Phillips. <gasps> that is good shit. Well, fuck me. Maybe. <laughs> He's Phil in. He's servicing a client. <laughs> Is that what I think it is? Here I go. 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 I'm like that. I'm like that.